This morning, we are speaking to the man who might be the world's most famous climate scientist. Michael Mann's work 25 years ago earned him acclaim and scorn, and he's been at the center of the discussion over the future of our planet ever since. His new book is called Our Fragile Moment. We met up with Mann at the Academy of Natural Sciences at Drexel University. We're sitting here right next to our fossil fuels. Well, you know, they have a lesson for us. The dinosaurs, uh, you know, uh, didn't see the asteroid that was coming that led to their extinction. They had no agency. They couldn't do anything about it. We don't have that excuse. Fossil fuels are the leftovers from plants and animals that have accumulated in the ground since life on Earth began. For more than 150 years, they've been our number one source of energy. Michael Mann says we're burning through them a million times faster than they formed. There's no analog in the past for the rate of warming we're causing today with massive extraction and burning of fossil fuels. And so it's important to recognize what lessons the past can teach us and what lessons maybe they can't. Clams and corals uh, are one of these biological archives that we can use to reconstruct uh, past climate conditions. The Academy of Natural Sciences at Drexel University has one of the world's largest collections of biological artifacts, which are important to understanding the history of the Earth's temperature. So these clams can tell us what the water temperature was like, what what the conditions were like what, at the time, what, what the, hundreds of years ago. What, yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, and you get enough of these, and they sample different time periods, and you overlap them. Yeah, this this one is pretty. It's uh, a big clam. In fact, you can get good exercise. Yeah, actually, yeah, no, it's these. a nice um, little. You could do yeah. some. I think Rocky actually used these. <laughs> the clams we saw shed light on the last couple centuries. Man's new book, Our Fragile Moment, delves far deeper going back hundreds of millions of years. You write that we have thus far found no other planet in the universe with such benevolent conditions. It's almost as if this planet Earth were custom made for us, and yet it wasn't. What does that mean? Well, you know, Earth has been around for 4.5 billion years. Uh, life has been around for almost four of those billion years. Um, we've only been around for, you know, several hundred thousand years. It's a tiny sliver. It's the smallest of slivers of Earth history and life history. A quarter century ago, man introduced the world to this graph, known as the hockey stick graph. Using data from ice cores, tree rings, and coral, man and other scientists say they were able to piece together the climate history of Earth for the past 1,000 years the first time anyone had done that in such detail. Not everyone agreed. Suddenly I found myself being attacked by Republican politicians and right-wing news outlets. There was just, there were these group of people coming after me. Why does it seem impossible to separate the politics from the science? You know, it's, it's a great question. Um, you, we don't have uh, any trouble with, you know, the science of cosmology and, and, and the Big Bang, um, you know, astrophysics. But climate. But, but somehow, when it comes to climate, there's this huge uh, controversy that swirls around the science. What I would say, and, and we can see examples of this in the past, for example, the science that told us that tobacco was harmful to human health. There was a huge blowback. The science was solid. The tobacco scientists themselves in their internal documents said as much. I think something that turns some people off is, well, you said 10 or 20 years ago, the Arctic was gonna be melted by now. And it ha hasn't happened. So why should I believe all this? Yeah, it, fair enough. And, and there are these caricatures that exist of like, the scientists and the science and what we said, and there's been a lot of distortion. You do understand that this is an apocalyptic event. This is, this is a large... Another type of caricature was of man, played by Leonardo DiCaprio in Don't Look Up, which satirized humanity's inaction in the face of certain destruction. We really did have everything, didn't we? I mean, when you think about it, Mann says the greatest threat today is no longer denialism, but doomism. The feeling that any steps we take are too little, too late. Are we 
more or less screwed than we were 10 years ago. <laughs> well, I'm glad you, you phrase it that way because uh, I have colleagues who say, we're, we'll use the F word, <laughs> we're effed. Um, and my reply to that is, the question is never whether or not we're effed or screwed. It's how effed are we? Uh, and what I mean by that is, if you live in Maui, you've already seen devastating climate consequences. If you live in Canada, if you live in California, if you live here in Philadelphia, where we had tremendous flooding, for all of those people, dangerous climate change has arrived. So the question now isn't, are we going to prevent dangerous climate impacts? It's going to be, how bad are we willing to let it get? You can pick apart the edges of any scientific evidence, but the long-term trend, according to man, is indisputable and as foolish as ever to ignore. When you hear someone say, drill, baby, drill, today, what's your reaction? Um, you know, if they're talking about ice cores, I say, go do it. <laughs> um, if they're talking about drilling fossil fuels, uh, I say, look, the Stone Age didn't end for want of stones. And the fossil fuel age won't end for want of fossil fuels. It'll end because something better has come along. Yeah. That thing is renewable energy. And the companies that recognize that are going to be the leaders in the coming uh, decades. And the ones that don't, they're going to go down with that sinking ship. Mm. The economics remains such an enormous part of this. Yeah. And that is no matter how you feel about any of this, right. if it's cheaper to do something with renewables, everybody's going to do it. Right.